they do that? How do they do that? How do they put together that incredible summer thunder show at Bland's Park? Stay tuned. In the next half hour, we're going to show you. something magical about them, something that captures our imagination like nothing else. It's as if we can bring the stars right down to earth, hold them in our hands, watch them dance and burst just overhead. Fireworks are magic, plain and simple, man-made magic. And every year about this time, that magic comes to Keystone Country in a big way. It comes here. Lands Park in Tipton. Right here is where it's all going to happen. On the 4th of July at about 10.30 in the evening, there will be a fireworks show like nothing you've ever seen. Lands Park and most of the surrounding area will fill up with tens of thousands of people, maybe 50,000 people. Mother Nature will obligingly dim the lights. The music will begin. And right up there, right up there, the night will erupt with great balls of fire, showers of sparks, a hundred different colors, blasts of thunder, fireworks thunder, summer thunder. Ah, oh, I just can't wait. Summer thunder is going to be a real kick this year. Big, too. 50% bigger. 50% more fireworks. Bigger and better than ever, as they say on television. You want to know how they're making it all happen? Would you believe it all started with a song? It was July the 5th last year, I sat Joe Del Grosso in my, uh, in my car and said, listen to this, and I played the opening song to the show this year. Uh, it's a Paul Schaefer song called Coast to Coast. And I said, what if we take a break from the standard patriotic uh, uh, type uh, presentation for the 4th of July, which we'd pretty much uh, done it uh, uh, end to end the last couple of years, and what if we do a musical tour of the United States? And uh, he said, yeah, that might work. We began selecting music, and, and really all through the year, we hear a song, make a mental note, and then come here to, to Data Music Services and, and essentially put the whole thing together. We're a recording studio, 24-track um, digital recording studio. We do digital editing. We do um, a lot of production. Basically, uh, Tom puts together a list of songs, and we assemble uh, just a rough sketch of the uh, the, uh, the hooks of the songs or the parts of the songs that we want to edit. We assemble an order of those songs, and then we fly them into the computer digitally, and then we do the edits. We take the excerpt of each song that we want and uh, edit that to the exact length of the excerpt we want, and then we string them together back to back. Now, the hard part comes in when you, uh, when you go from one tune to another because there's such a, a variety of music on this uh, file that you may go from a country tune to an orchestral tune or um, you know, a rock tune to uh, something, uh, for example, Northern Exposure, which is something quite diverse. All right, so the problem comes in in making those edits very, very smooth and musical sounding and, and with the the editing software we use we can actually edit right down to the beat so i actually sit there in the computer sometimes and conduct the beats at the transition points to make sure that they're musical then the soundtrack is uh is shipped to loveland ohio to rosin famous fireworks and they uh, they essentially then actually begin building shells to, to match the music they program their whole show and they have software that actually calculates the time it takes for the shell to go up in the air and burst. These shells are actually timed with the music, so certain colors and certain displays of fireworks go off that coincide with what you're hearing. This truly is the age of technology, isn't it? They use computers to put together the summer thunder music. 
They use computers to figure out exactly when to set off the fireworks. It's pretty amazing stuff. When we come back, we'll have more amazing stuff to show you, like how they make the fireworks, how they set them off, how they stick them in the ground and shoot them. Stick around for more of the magic of the making of Summer Thunder 93. Behold the humble snake. They're kind of fun, easy to use. Just take that black pellet, put it on the ground, put a match to it, and uh, presto. Something that basically resembles a snake. Pretty neat. This is one of the most basic kinds of fireworks, but you know it can give you some idea of how the big ones do their thing, too. A snake pellet is made of a combination of chemicals. When they burn, the chemicals react in a way that makes something that looks like a snake. Different chemicals in different combinations produce different reactions. That's how the summer thunder fireworks work, too. Basically, um, you know, you have a number of different chemicals used in the fireworks industry that determine a number of things. Um, as far as colors, uh, there's a number of different chemicals used to determine blues, reds, yellows, and then they throw like magnesium, titanium in with them to give you the sparkling effect and so forth. The oriental shells are round configurations, and the U.S. made or, you know, the our shells are more a cylinder type shell. But they basically all have a lift underneath them. There's a fuse that comes down into the lift, and as we hit that with either electronically or you can hit it with a fuse, the first thing that happens is that fuse travels alongside of that shell and hits the lift pack. When that hits that lift, it explodes in there, causing them to shell to thrust out of the gun and out the front of the brake. Based on the inches in diameter, Three inch shell will go 300 feet. A four inch shell will go 400 feet. Five inch, six inch, and so forth. So for every uh, inch in diameter, they go 100 foot. This is a, a five inch shell, so five inches in diameter. Uh, what I have in the box here is a couple oriental shells. I have a 10 inch shell, which you can see here. And again, the size of the shell is, is 10 inch, and to give you an example of what the shell is, it's a red blue and red peony shell, uh, the blue and red pistol. So what you're going to see is, again, breaking up in, in the air. This shell should go up approximately 1,000 feet. And then upon the uh, burst, you'll see the red and blue effect, the peony effect. And then at right at the tip of that shell will be then, will change with blue and red pistol. So you'll get a blue and then a red ch changing to red. This will be the biggest shell we actually shoot in the show. You think there's not much difference in a 10 to 12 until you really pick it out of its box. This thing weighs about 30 pounds. Uh, again, you're going to thrust this whole shell in the air 1,200 feet before it back to the brake. These are all technically made by hand. These shells cannot be made with machinery because simply there's too much static electricity. There's too, you know, everything with, so all this stuff you see here is actually rolled with wheat glue and paper uh, nothing can be really done uh, with any type of machinery. Right now, we're really in the beginning stages of getting the show underway. Uh, yesterday, we spent probably about three or four hours uh, just getting all the racks, the individual equipment that we need to set the show up. Uh, we're in the garage right now building uh, a lot of the racks. We'll be putting sideboards on those racks. Uh, hopefully finish that up probably by tomorrow afternoon sometime. Uh, maybe Thursday morning. We will then have all the equipment ready that we need to put the show together. On Thursday morning, we'll have some of the crew coming in from uh, Rossi. We'll have uh, three people coming in Thursday morning and two more coming in Thursday afternoon. So that'll give us a crew of five from there. I will pretty much have the layout of the show done in terms of all where the equipment goes at. Um, I'll have that all drawn out. And then we will then at that time start bringing those mortars out of the garage area putting them on the grounds here as we start to lay out the show. And each rack then, as we bring it out, we'll number that rack according to the number of shots that we have for the show. We have a total of, I think, 79 cues in the show itself. Uh, but each cue, sometimes that might have 18 shells in one cue, or 24, or 36, or in your finale having, you know, 7, 800, whatever. 
So it depends on which which queue we're using. But we'll we'll take a tag. We'll mark each individual rack: one A, one one B, one C. The number two queue might be two A and two C, and so forth. Once we get all those laid out, and we have everything laid out on you know ready to go. Then we'll take and get into the trailer. We bring start bringing, and each box is individually marked, as you can see. Uh, this says location B, shot number 67 and 68. So we know from that particular box that as we mark that rack, we'll say, okay, we need 67 and 68. We'll come back out to the um, trailer, pull out shot 67 and 68, and actually load those shells into those guns. As we individually put the show, shells in those guns, we will cover them uh, with plastic, foil, and whatever, so that we're in ready. Once we get all the shells in, we know everything in place. Then we bring out the firing board, start running our uh, electric lines over, start actually wiring into the squib itself. A, a squib is the actual igniter that is used. We throw one volt of electricity into this squib. If you notice, it's right into the uh, um, cap portion of the shell. And as we hit that one volt off the electric firing board, that will actually take and hit into the fuse that ignites the uh, squib mechanism, which is attached to the shell, igniting that. As soon as that hits the shell, it's automatic. It's, it's, the shell's lit, and it's out of the gun almost instantaneous. We could go to a computer-controlled firing system where, as the, as the shell is going, a, a tone would be set, and that would actually ignite the shell. We haven't chosen to do that. There's some, some problems with that type of technology at this point with fireworks. What, what we do is actually, with, it's a four-track tape. Uh, they are taking the last track of that four-track four tape, and they have put in sound cues, uh, voice cues, that actually tell the firing board operator, which is going to be Bob Lutz, who's Joe Rossi's son-in-law, uh, he will be standing there with the set headsets on, down here by the garage area, right across from the uh, where we're going to fire at. And uh, what he will hear is basically something like this. Um, at the beginning of the show, he's going to hear 30 seconds uh, to, sh to fire, 15 seconds. Get ready to shoot, fire, you know, fire one. Uh, when, fi when one comes, shot one comes, they'll say fire one. He'll hit one. He will then, then it'll say, and then one may be a series of, of 26 shells, 30 shells, whatever it is. He will then tell him on the next cue, cue two coming in, in 30 more seconds. Uh, get ready, Q2, 15 seconds. He will then be able to know that he's getting ready to hit Q2. Saturday morning, we should be able to start wiring the show. And we feel that that's going to probably take a good day and a half to two days. We may be even up into Sunday morning until we can feel that we have everything done. You know, the biggest satisfaction is simply when the show is over, everything is dead silent. I mean, the, the noise is deafening and you're hearing the finale and it's roaring down the mountain. But the next roar you hear as, you, as it ends is the crowd. Well, Summer Thunder 93 is closer to becoming a reality. We got the soundtrack done, the fireworks have been made, the launch site is set. Things are happening. Hey, we're on our way. Still got a lot to do, though. When we come back, we're going to show you what it takes for the TV station, WTAJ TV 10, to bring Summer Thunder right to your home live via satellite. A little bit later, we'll set off some fireworks, kind of a test firing up special preview just for you. So stick around for more of the making of Summer Thunder 93. By the way, would you like some pizza? I think our producer's buying it. Pizza for all these fine folks. The guy with the beard's pretty good. I think the guy in the white sweater could use some help. How about you? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> How you doing? You know, each year, WTAJ-TV does a live broadcast of Summer Thunder. We think it's awfully important that everybody get a chance to see these incredible fireworks and hear that great inspirational music, even people who can't make it to Bland's Park on the 4th of July. A live television cast is a massive undertaking. It's a project that we take a lot of pride in. We're covering the fireworks because I think they are...
integral part of what we're trying to create in central Pennsylvania. It's a feeling of taking pride in Keystone Country. And if we can create a number of events around which people coalesce, then they have events in which they can take pride and a positive spirit of optimism begins to develop. If we can have the biggest fireworks show that's ever occurred here in central Pennsylvania, people are kind of proud of that. And if they begin to be proud of things like fireworks and so on, they can begin to be proud of the city in which they live and the surroundings in which they live and so on. Fireworks are great fun. They're fun for kids and they're fun for old people alike. I can remember sitting in uh, Cincinnati where I came from uh, here and just rising to my feet going, yes, when they were over. It's terrific. It's an uplifting experience. We've got a lot of people working on the project. Our staff has been working on it for months. Uh, we've had meetings. Uh, we've planned this thing. That what we'd like to do this time at Summer Thunder, mm -hmm. since the messenger is gone overhead, I'd like to be able to put three cameras over on the Del Grosso side with well, the truck. We're going to have cameras on mountaintops, cameras across the road in the park, cameras uh, 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 up and down the road uh, to capture this thing. There'll be six cameras. One of the cameras going to be up there in the mountain. There'll be five other cameras, two on the other side of the park and three on this side of the park. What we'll do is put the uh, choir here so that we can pick them up. I got this to uh, show the golf course, you know, as much as we can. Now, uh, we could put two chairs here and put them, set them on that, or we can set them underneath that flower thing over there. There's a lot of cable involved, probably a mile and a half of cabling. six cameras tied into it. To do that, we have to go across these two buildings so we'll not interfere with people, the crowd that's going to be down here, because we expect a very large crowd for the fireworks so no one gets hurt, so we're just going across the building. The main, main installation is going to be on Sunday. This is the harder stuff. This, this is so that the uh, installation is done before the public gets here, across the road and so forth. Then it's just merely hooking up the cables and uh, lining the cameras up, and we're all set. Okay, so the TV station's ready to go, and Summer Thunder is rolling closer than ever. All we got left is some finishing touches, like getting Blanche Park ready for the thousands of spectators, tens of thousands of spectators, and doing a test firing at a fireworks. That's what you'll see next. When the making of Summer Thunder 93 continues, stay with us. Summer Thunder 93 is so close you can practically taste it. Practically see the fireworks. You can almost hear the thunder booming and echoing through the valley over Plants Park. Matter of fact, you can see the lights. You can hear the boom. They're firing a test fire, a preliminary check of the fireworks. We have basically eight shells. Um, we have two three-inch shells, two four-inch, two five-inch, and two six-inch shells. The idea of the test firing basically was to get, uh, we put a camera up on top of Scalp Mountain this year for the first time. We're hoping to get a, a very good aerial view, actually almost a top view of the fireworks as they're coming up. How are things coming up there? Well, we're just sitting now waiting for the fire to go off. How's the view? It's always nice to be able to light up the board, fire again here tonight with four actual shells in it. We didn't really fire any with shells since last year. So I think that kind of gives us another uh, another angle, another view, and you know, making sure everything's okay. Okay, we're going to arm the board. Okay. We just arm. You can hear the, the alarm going off. We silence the alarm and we're ready to fire. 
okay? Now I'm going to give him a five count. And when I hit, when I go to five, I'm just going to press number one. We should see two three-inch shells going out of the gun. Okay, Joe, I'm going to give you a five count. We should be ready in about five seconds. You ready? Go ahead. Five, four, three, two, one, blast. Five, four, three, two, one, blast. Give you a little more pop, guys. There's the six inch shell. As they get bigger, they get louder coming out of the gun. Five, four, three, two, one, blast. That's it, Joe. That's it. Okay, we got a good shot, we think. <laughs> <laughs> Hot dogs, ice cream, an amusement park, and fireworks. Oh, you better believe it, fireworks. Sounds like a great 4th of July to me. I guess we're just about ready for Summer Thunder 93, and I think we've pretty well covered all the bases. I gotta believe that this year's show will be the best one yet. Here's some predictions for you. I predict there'll be plenty of applause, lots of breathless gasps and oohs and ahs, and more smiles than you can count. About 50,000 of them. And I predict that all of us will be captivated as the night sky in our valley comes to life. As rockets leap one after another, some bursting into fiery blossoms, others swooping and reeling like comets. There'll be geysers and showers and streamers, strobes of light, every kind and color of light you've ever seen, ever dreamed of. The sound will hold you spellbound, the cascade of music, the thrilled cries of the crowd, the crackling, crashing, screaming, chattering, the thunderous booms and the echoes just as big. And you might wonder as you watch and listen, if your heart pounds and you can't look away, you might wonder why you love those fireworks so much. Is it just their beauty, the flash, the dazzle, the art they create in our night sky? Is it the memories they bring, the nostalgia, the return of simple, childlike excitement? Is it the way they bombard our senses, driving out sadness and anger, replacing them with wonder? Is it the way they bring us all together? It unites us, at least for one night, despite our differences. Or is it because the fireworks remind us of our own lives? They're beautiful, all too brief. You know, the answer might be all of the above.